Um, yeah. Can I add something uh, here? Um, sure, Agu, uh, please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, since this was brought up, and I'm I'm currently in US, I I had to mention this. Um, so there is a confusion that is being you know spread by, uh, by you know wittingly or unwittingly by a lot of people who confuse the societal or economical or political aspects of how medicine is practiced in some countries with the actual quality of the medicine itself. And let me um, indulge me for a moment. If you look at for all the people who claim to have a problem with the U.S. healthcare systems, if you look at every country, the richest and the most influential people, the first place they fly into for any of their unmanageable or un, uh, no curable situations is to U.S., including so-called you know the you know, the Communist Party members or whatever whoever, right? So 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 that, so that in in itself, it's kind of an anecdotal evidence in itself is a proof that the health and or the science behind the health care that is being practiced here works and it works superlatively well beyond anybody else any other uh, system and that that is that is the reason why you know health uh, healthcare has progressed because of the science here now societally how we should take care of the people who do not have the influence or the money to get their health back in order that is a different question. That is not the problem of modern medicine. That is the problem of you know, other other domains. Having said that, I, I also had a question for uh, you know, uh, Dr. Vivek, um, uh, who, who raised this question, this point earlier. How is it that, uh, you know, and if I have mistaken your, uh, if I have misread your profile, please correct me. I do see that you, uh, you say you're for Ayurveda and for yoga, and, uh, and you are against pseudoscience. I, I, in my limit, I'm not a medical practitioner. I do not understand this well, but I try to follow the, you know, the scientific temper. I find that cognitively dissonant to say that you are for Ayurveda and yoga and against pseudoscience. And um, you know, and if it's, it's, you know, if it comes across as an ad hominem, you know, moderators can stop me from that. But I, I find that because this, this kind of, uh, of, uh, of uh, ambiguity sometimes spreads a lot more harm among the audience. Uh, you know, the audience who is not well equipped to understand all this, these ambiguities can can cause more harm and create more misperceptions about modern science. And I don't think we should, we should you know, give an inch about the superiority of modern science and the workingness of the modern science in, in any form because of the bad application or bad decisions taken by society in the application of modern science. That's that's my point of view and open to be corrected. Yeah. So first coming to uh, the point about greed should not be used as a system. I was not talking about the societal issue here. I was talking about the systemic flaw in the way modern science is being delivered. And this systemic flaw, see, whenever a system is bad, it opens ways for other systems to take advantage. So I was talking about a systemic flaw and I teach leadership in healthcare. I teach model of Arvindai care. I teach model of many such, even Narayana Radhyala is one of the examples. Those are the models which are suitable for India and not the models by which uh, presently most of the hospitals are trying to deliver because I don't think that model is going to be enough. And I have done enough kind of uh, analysis on this and I don't see any system which will try to emulate something which is happening in in country like us is going to work for a country like india that's point number one point number two regarding the uh, the point of uh, may i may i may i just uh, connect the, the because i think you got my question on the point number one wrong I mean, that is the, the system is undeniably has area of improvement in us no no denying that you know because from a societal and, and the implementation point of view but the health care the science on which the whole system on, on which the medicine is delivered that is not to be blamed for the system is what i was trying to say i absolutely agree with you health it is the science of modern medical science which is definitely should be promoted and which only helps nothing else helps only those scientific principles are sacrosanct nothing else but i have to understand if my science is going to take a beating because of the system and i become the part of the system then i'm not helping the science itself because it is the science it is the system which will deliver this science to people 
and not the science itself so that was my limited point anyways i think this man this may go into a a, a long debate and uh, we can choose a time for this now coming to uh, what mr labin said about uh, my my views on ayurveda i don't think that ayurveda the complete part of ayurveda uh, which is uh, which is practiced i am not for all the things what uh, ayurveda acharya claims i'm certainly not for that but there is a lot of authentic work happening there is an organization called s vyasa which does lot of authentic work and i have tried to see uh, some of their work and it makes lot of sense and there are practices of breathing exercises especially in yoga breathing exercises which are definitely uh, useful for uh, for example labile hypertension and many few things they are being used for uh, treating anxiety related disorders and they are helpful there are application of some part of yoga in uh, uh, triggering your parasympathetic nervous system and dealing with some of the issues uh, which are inflammatory in nature so i am just talking about limited aspect of that it's not that i say blindly whatever is being uh, being uh, claimed by somebody who is practicing ayurveda is true no but ayurveda is certainly not like homeopathy there is some stuff in it in it which can be looked into which should be examined which should be probably uh, which should go through more or uh, more research and uh, on the principles of modern science they may have something to offer and many of our medicines have come through that uh, we cannot forget that yeah so that was my limited point here it's not that see if i was somebody who would just believe everything what anybody says uh, i would not have come out of the system i worked in corporate hospital and i have seen the kind of system we have created now whether we like it or not we may be part of it but it's my first duty to first clean my home if something which is so important that is modern medical scientific temper which is so very important if it is getting uh, if it is not reaching to the common man because of a flawed system it's i in my view it's my duty to correct that system if i just take that no it's none of my headache then i think somewhere i am missing the point that was my limited point otherwise i agree everything what all uh, you have told i don't think there principally we disagree on something but maybe uh, uh, my weightage is on one side where i would try to because i see there are many things we can uh, keep on discussing about what is wrong i have seen patients i worked in nephrology ward in my initial career after doing my mbbs and i have seen patient in my short career when i worked as clinician is as uh, people coming with renal failures because of many of these kind of therapies so i completely agree with all the dangerous effects of it and i am not at all for it my only limited point is there is a big big uh, uh, reason because of the system which is delivering uh, the modern medical science that people are going away from these modalities and that much can be stopped because it is my home and it's my duty to try to clean it that's it thank you so much Libin, uh, would you like to uh, uh, sure? Make I some... will probably first start because um, you know then now the discussion has slightly moved to Ayurveda and uh, whether he's. I clearly heard everything what he said, and he clearly clarified he does not support everything in Ayurveda, but at the very same time he told that you know don't forget that a lot of the modern medicines came from Ayurveda. So one thing I want to try to clarify, Vivek, is that whenever we speak about Ayurveda, we have to take this in three parts because that is very much easy to understand. The first thing is the fundamentals of Ayurveda and what Ayurveda is based on, which is basically the called Panchabuddha and the Tridosha and everything. Just like how homeopathy is founded on, as I initially clarified, uh, the similia similibus curandor and this this the, the law of infinite dilutions. Without that, there is no homeopathy. Just like that, uh, without Tridosha and Panchabuddha and everything, we cannot even call something an Ayurveda in the first place. That is their founding principle, which make that whole thing Ayurveda. So we know at the moment that that founding fund foundation or whatever principles or theories or hypotheses what they have is at the moment completely contradicting with what we have in the existing scientific knowledge and hence that is pseudoscience. So everything they claim that human body is based upon five principal elements is wrong. Tridosha is what or the prakriti is what which uh, is uh, is there in the person. Every person has a predominant prakriti and the deviation of the prakriti which cause a disease is also wrong. So these two things can be outright rejected. That's the first part. The second part is 
about the uh, the medicines they use in ayurveda so the ayurveda person make a diagnosis based on all these tridoshas and panchabudas and then they also try to treat people based on their you know whether somebody is more vada prakriti or kapha prakriti then they try to see how they can give medicine so that they can bring the prakriti back and so forth so the problem is that as abi rightly pointed out and many people have already done these studies many of the ayurvedic preparations do not have enough evidence to show that they can be uh, uh, properly given as a medicine in fact it has caused more harm too so if you just check in the fda's page or in the european union page you can never see them they are being approved as a medicine they are still as a food and supplement so that is one thing like you know when you go to a traditional ayurveda practitioner he might have this knowledge from years from his grandparents grandparents and so forth and he might be doing it exactly the same way and what is a scientific basis that some whole plant extract or a root or a leaf mashed and given has anything to do with curing something and also what are the possible side effects all the other uh, phytosteroids and alkaloids in that how can that affect is a big question and we cannot just give something without knowing what is in there and now come to my third part which is what i fully support on you or is we should do research on anything which has a medicinal property at the moment i already told the fundamental principles of ayurveda is wrong so let's see not say, let's not say let's do research on ayurveda let's focus on research on active ingredients of everything not only just in india all over the world and try to identify molecules which could have a potential pharmacological effect isolate them synthesize them and use it because you know that all the plants have a different um uh, climate or weather patterns and they all contain different amounts of active ingredients maybe the active ingredient which could be curative might be in low amount and something which is more harmful which cannot be tolerated by the liver might be in high amounts so we need to identify those lead compounds not only just from plants also from other sources like i previously also mentioned this from from everything from 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 jellyfish to all the way to phytoplankton to to venom of animals everything we need things which has to go through this rigorous process of proving and testing and knowing what is the right dose what could be used and what is a safe dose and what is a overdose and adverse events and even pro- possibly antidotes so that is no more than ayurveda that is actually what modern medicine does so i think there is a clear distinction i have to bring is like when you say you don't fully agree with ayurveda but at the very same time you told there are still things in ayurveda we should not be saying we should have still things in ayurveda there are still things in any medicinal plant or a herb or anything on this planet let's put it like that that's the way the the whole fundamental principles of ayurveda which is based on is actually pseudo science so that is exactly my point and thank you i'm done i think i yeah. quite agree for the most part of what you just said i quite agree with it it's not about ayurveda or anything anything which seems to have some value should be looked into should be researched should we should find active molecules and we should put them into practice and that's what modern medical science tend to do and i quite agree with that yes thank you yeah uh, vivek and i would i would just uh, would like to add one more point about uh, many medicines that we have identified from ayurveda which is actually not the right statement because ayurveda per se if you actually look at it and all the modern medicines that have been uh, derived over the you know over the last few centuries and currently still in use there is absolutely no contribution from ayurveda in that please be very very careful on this because uh, because i have been i i have actually written about it and there are a lot of historians and we have actually had sessions on it you actually look at any of these medicines that have a plant origin whether it be aspirin or metformin from the french lilac whether it be uh, curcumin from turmeric uh, paclitaxel anti chemotherapy drug chemotherapy drugs from plants they are all being from european folklore peruvian folklore and from jesuit priests and ayurveda has absolutely no role in it so there are no medicines currently clinically in use that has been derived from ayurvedic knowledge and this is completely a uh, wrong information which actually even a lot of common people actually have this misinformation with them they all think that you know you find uh, some medicine from a herb anywhere in the world they directly dump it on top of ayurveda saying that ayurveda did it that's not true even artemisin is because of modern medical intervention in a herb called uh, artemisia and that is from traditional chinese medicine and they actually used it for the first time for fevers and none of such uh, such work has been done through ayurveda for a modern medicine drug discovery and it is currently not uh, not, not the not not in practice also at present because ayurveda still sticks to its pseudo scientific principles and it is a very clear cut uh, pseudo science 
yeah and also ayurved people uh, stay in the deception uh, kind of like uh, ayurved has patented all of the uh, plants and all the uh, natural uh, medical pl- uh, plants and herbs so it's it's not like that it's just a mere coincidence uh, that we are using those uh, plants or herbs uh, in modern medicine and if you uh, even even if you ask them uh, why does uh, xyz work uh, they won't have an answer their obvious answer will be okay it it aligns these uh, tridoshas and stuff like that they won't have any uh, solid answer for that okay now yeah dr arif yeah i'd like to add a point to that because it was uh, told here that there are certain problems in our system so until we uh, clear all such problems uh, we should do our part that's what was said here and i think no i i didn't say until i just said we should look into that as well because we are the people who are in the system and yeah. if we just simply close that eyes and do not even talk about that okay uh, i think that's not fair yeah yeah, I, yeah okay uh, i got your point but uh i was uh, coming to that so what we are doing right now here that is opening a room uh, in a clubhouse and uh, having a discussion about all these things at a time you can look at your watches it's almost 12 here in india and still we are dis- discussing all these pro- all these uh, uh, problems and we are discussing about the uh, probable solutions to bring about some change so this is exactly what we should do to bring about change into the system this is the basic the foundation which we can do right now this is the thing and we should continue doing this until we see a change in the system because through us only we can see the change we cannot expect someone else to come and save all these things there is no messiah to come and save us so, so we should do this we should keep on debating all these things and we should come uh, come to a uh, consensus regarding the problems and uh that's how we evolve and that and if, when when i say this you might be thinking this is this is something impossible no this has already happened in many other parts of the world and this is how they have changed they have evolved from their previous state and we can also do that so for that for our country what is required right now is these kind of debates that should happen more frequently and let's promote it thank you yeah so let us go to manoj now i think he's been waiting for a long time uh, thank you dr vivek manoj please thank you i've been waiting since 3 last 3 hours sir uh, my name is manoj